Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back to another post processing tutorial. Um, as always in my tutorials, apologies if you can hear the wildlife in the background. You're probably well used to that by now. Um, I don't know. Maybe it might give it a nice ambient feel. But I'm going to show you how I process my Milky Way images in this video, and we're going to try and go from something like this to something like this in Photoshop and Camera Raw. So. Without further ado, I'm going to exit this, I'm going to go back, I have my photo open in Lightroom, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so this is a 5 or 6 image panel I think, shot at 24mm, uh, each panel was, oh was it a 2 minute exposure, let me see. A 60 second exposure at ISO 1000 f 2.0 so just if you were wondering what my settings were here they were so it's one two three four five six yeah, six panels across so that's why I've got these white white lines here and stuff so I haven't cropped in for the panel yet um, the first thing I'm going to do is do my star reduction now I'm using a new software called um, well it's not new it's new for me it's called star exterminator by RC Astro um, I have videos on how to do star reduction in Photoshop using the RGB method. So if you want to do star reduction, click on that and have a look at those videos. Um, but I'm going to use the star exterminator here because I paid like, I think it was like $100 for it. So yeah, I have it set up as a quick action here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click OK. Depending on how powerful your PC is, this might take a minute. It might take 30 seconds. It might take five minutes. If, you're, if it takes five minutes to do this, then maybe you might want to think about upgrading your PC, <laughs> especially for astrophotography. So it's given me two layers, uh, stars and starless, so that's with no stars removed, and this is what it looks like with the stars removed. Now I don't want to remove every single star, so all I do is I'll just reduce this opacity until I get a result that I'm happy with. And 20, 25-30%. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm actually gonna merge these layers now. First thing I do is go up to my adjustments and I'm gonna put a curves layer. Um, if you already have your sky blended with your foreground, then I would recommend selecting the sky first before you do this curves adjustment, just so it will only affect the sky. I'm using a different foreground for this shot, so it I don't care. But uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just going to put a curves on this, I'm going to pull down here and I'm going to give my highlights some oomph and I'm also going to give the mid tone. So you can see it's already made a huge difference, curves really really powerful. Um, so that's quite nice. Just watch it doesn't darken your image too much. So what I can do here is I can press B for my brush tool, I can change it to black, I can set my opacity, and I can just brighten back up the top of that there. Just so it's not looking too, too dark. That's very optional. If you want, you might want to darken the top of this, and I probably will with a grad filter in a while, but here we go. So, now that we've that complete, our curves there, I'm gonna hit Shift, Option, Command, E. There's also construction going on beside me, so apologies if you can hear that. Um, and now we're going to go into Camera Raw. So I'm going to right click, Convert to Smart Object. I've discussed the reasons to do that before. It's if I want to make any changes when I come out of Camera Raw, then I can. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is fix my white balance. I'm very much, I lean towards the kind of cooler side of things when I'm doing my astrophotography. It's just what I prefer. I don't really like the kind of warm look um, unless it's in the core itself. So I'm going to bring down my temperature there and I'm going to up the magenta a small little bit <laughs> and I actually don't like how bright the top of that sky is so I'm going to pull down a linear grid and just darken it slightly not too much pull down exposure and the blacks perfect okay so the white balance is looking good uh, I want to bring out more detail in this Milky Way so I'm going to select my brush I'm going to create a new mask, select the brush tool, 
There goes my phone. I'm going to reduce the blacks, up the whites, up the highlights. And I'm going to brush that in. Oh, sorry, I meant to actually dehaze as well. So increase the dehaze. And that just brings out more detail again in the core. Now I was in, these are like really dark skies, Bartle 2 skies. So even at 60 seconds, you can really see the different nebulas and details coming out in the core itself. It's actually the most I've ever captured, to be honest. So yeah, really, really cool. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to create a new mask here with a brush. And I'm actually going to kind of warm this up slightly and just brush in a small bit of warmth into that core because that's kind of the primary color inside in that core uh, like that and then I'll increase the contrast okay that's looking reasonably good uh, nothing else really I want to do here I cut up my highlights if I wanted to reduce the blacks a bit more contrast play around with it do whatever you want. I'm going to click OK on that. Comes back into Photoshop. And yeah, that's looking really nice already. So I'm happy enough with that. I don't need to go back into Camera Raw. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Rasterize Layer, which is hiding from me right now. It's probably staring me in the face. There it is. Rasterize Layer. Perfect. Now, I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to call it DNB. Even though I won't be doing any burning, but I'll be doing some dodging. I'm going to select my dodge tool here. Mid-tone, 16%. Make the brush a small, a bit smaller. And I'm just going to brush. Make this a bit brighter here. Bring out even more detail. Just like that. You can make the sky a bit brighter if you want. And the reason I duplicated the layer was if I wasn't happy, I could reduce the opacity of this. So it's kind of like a non-destructive workflow, I suppose you could call it. Yeah, really happy with that. Now I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E, combine them into one layer. Now that is a destructive workflow in Photoshop, so now I cannot go back here. So if you don't like that, then maybe don't do that. But that's the way I work. I'm going to go into Adjustments here. And I'm going to go to Hue Saturation. And I want to make this a really saturated Milky Way. This one, a gnarly looking one. Usually I don't, but let's go for it. So I'm just going to really increase the saturation there and that. By the way, if you're wondering what this green hue is, that's Airglow from strong auroral activity we've had. Um, it's not Aurora, it's Airglow. I'm too far north in Australia to get to get Aurora, but uh, yeah. So look, that's done a beautiful job bringing out all this detail in the Milky Way. But it's made this too saturated and this too saturated. So the beauty of Photoshop, because we have a white mask over this, I can hit Command and I to invert that to a black mask. Now I've hidden the adjustment. I press B on my keyboard. I select a white brush, increase the opacity, and I'm gonna brush in my saturation there just like that oh yeah that's a mean looking Milky Way um, and I mean this isn't even probably like there's probably see people looking at this saying oh I can get way more detail out of my Milky Way and you probably can but I'm I'm not a dedicated astrophotographer in that it's not the only genre that I do so when I capture shots of this I'm pretty happy and yeah, that's it. Um, after that, you can go ahead and do what you want, but I'm pretty happy with that. If I was to do any adjustments, I'd probably reduce the saturation in the green, uh, just to get the bit of air glow out of it, but that Milky Way is done, it's processed, and now it is ready for blending. So I hope you enjoyed that. A couple of techniques that you might not have seen before. If you have seen all of them for happy days, I'm looking forward to seeing the images you create. All right. All the best.